Hi everyone, it's Sylvia here. If you watched my last video on the seven health benefits of sleep, you'll know just how important sleep is. So today, in this video, I want to cover ways you can improve your sleep. I'll give you eight actionable tips, then talk about four sleeping aids that have been scientifically proven to help promote a better night's rest. As usual, if you want to see the research behind what I'm talking about, the link is in the video description. All right, let's get into it. If you ever do struggle to sleep at night, know you're not alone. A 2009 sleep study of 11,000 adults found that two in three adults experience waking up during the night at least once, and 80% say they want to improve their sleep. And according to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, 30% of American adults don't get enough sleep each night. I personally wake up around 1 to 2 a.m. every night, and sometimes I just roll over and go back to sleep, but other times I end up staring at the ceiling, especially if I had had a stressful day. So here are eight tips to get you sleeping. Number one, exercise and move your body every day. Christopher Klein from the Department of Psychiatry at the University of Pittsburgh has noted a bi-directional relationship between sleep and exercise. The less you sleep, the less you move. But the less you move, the less you sleep. It's a downward spiral. And I see it firsthand with my own two kids. Usually they get a good amount of exercise at school, but if there's some change in their routine, and they don't get that exercise, I put them to bed at nine, but they're still awake two hours later. So try to squeeze that movement in during the day. Number two, leverage mind-body techniques such as meditation or yoga. A Harvard study on insomnia found that people who consistently practice yoga for just eight weeks slept better and longer than those who didn't practice. One great pose to try is legs up on the wall, which is considered restorative and good for sleep. I personally also use a meditation app called Calm, and it's been great. It has sleep talk downs, sleep music, as well as meditations. This app has helped me to fall asleep even on planes where I'm naturally anxious because of turbulence. And no, Calm did not pay me to say this. I just think it's cool. Number three, establish a bedtime and stick to it, even on weekends. One study done by researchers by Duke University School of Medicine looked at the regularity of sleep-wake patterns and impact on health. The lead author of the study, Lunsford Avery, says that you should set a regular bedtime and stick to it as best you can. Setting a consistent schedule helps you to sleep better. Number four, lower the temperature in your room. According to sleep scientist Matt Walker, your body needs to drop its core temperature by about two to three degrees Fahrenheit to initiate sleep and then to stay asleep. And that's the reason why you'll always find it easier to fall asleep in a room that's too cold rather than too hot. So aim for a bedroom temperature of around 65 degrees or about 18 degrees Celsius. Number five, create a comfortable rest environment. Take mattress, pillows, and sheets, but go beyond the bed too. An ideal bedroom environment might even mean blackout curtains, decor with calming colors, or getting a diffuser to fill your room with sleep-inducing aromas. The goal is to make your room feel like a relaxing sanctuary where you can snooze off peacefully every night. Six, Consider setting up a tech ban on TVs, computers, cell phones, and devices in your bedroom. Or if that's too much, try turning off the blue light emitted from your devices. On your phones and iPads, there's a night shift feature for changing the color temperature of your screen. And my Android phone has a bedtime mode, and that takes away any color at a prescribed time. It's pretty handy. Number seven, abstain from alcohol, caffeine, and big meals in the hours preceding bedtime. Those things can contribute to keeping you awake. I personally know many people who don't drink caffeine after 3 p.m. Okay, so those are my seven tips. You can also consider getting a device to track your sleep and see how much deep sleep you're actually getting. I know some people who swear by it. When I personally tried it, I didn't like it. The more I track, the more I get stressed about trying to get a perfect report card. But hey, that's just me and everyone's different, so you might want to try it out. Now, what do you do if you try all these things? You create a schedule, avoid caffeine, exercise, limit screen time, and it still doesn't work. What do you do? Well, a sleep aid might be the next thing to try. Here are some sleep aids that have been scientifically proven to be effective for getting a good night's rest. Number one, orthopedic cushions. According to research, pillow comfort plays a huge role in sleep. 
and orthopedic cushions come up on top when compared to other types of pillows. Here's one that I personally use. It's indented in the middle so that my neck is supported whether I'm sleeping on my back or on my side. So when I'm on my back, well, my head is here. And then when I roll to my side, my head is here and I get more support on my neck. Uh, so of course this is just good for me because I do both side and back sleeping, but there are many different types out there. I encourage you to find one that suits you. Number two, eye masks and earplugs. My husband has sworn by these things for as long as I've known him. In two separate studies, the use of eye masks and earplugs were found to be beneficial for sleep. The first study concluded that eye masks are an easy and cheap way to improve the quality of sleep. Whereas in the second study, they found that earplugs and eye masks together promote sleep and hormone balance in people exposed to noise and light. These sleep aids have also been recommended for individuals in critical care units and for people undergoing chemotherapy treatments. This is why we include the eye masks in our mind care box for cancer patients. You can find them on our website on amadira.com and they come with a travel pouch. Number three, supplements or herbal extracts in the form of tinctures or teas. Now, I'm not a doctor or nutritionist, so I'm not going to make any claims about herbs for your health. But I will point out that many extracts and supplements have been considered effective sleeping aids for millennia. Herbs such as valerian root, passionflower, and St. John's warts have all been studied and shown to be effective. And research has also shown that supplements of melatonin, magnesium, or calcium can support healthy sleep. As usual, I'm putting the links to the research in the video description for you to take a look at. Number four, music and background sounds in general. In one population survey, a whopping 62% of respondents said that they use music to help them fall asleep. And I was trying to get my newborns to sleep. White noise literally was my lifesaver. So the question is, what types of music and sounds should you use? Turns out that there's a lot of variety in what works for people. So let's dig into that in our next video. So I hope this video has given you some good ideas for getting a better night's rest. Again, I'm including the links to the research in the video description, so check them out. And like I said, in the next video, I'll be introducing you to different music and sounds for sleep. The great thing is that all sorts of sleep music are available for free on YouTube and Spotify. So there's no reason not to try them if you're having sleepless nights. I hope you'll join me in the next video, or if not, subscribe. That way you'll get notified the next time I publish another health topic video like this one. Until then, take care.